The attack on the Lower Sioux Agency was well thought out and calculated. The nearest military installation was Fort Ridgely, downstream on the Minnesota River over 20 miles away. News had reached the fort that the Sioux Agency was attacked that same morning. Captain John S. Marsh, 46 enlisted men, and an interpreter left the fort to investigate the attack and perhaps repel any invading rebel Dakota in the field. The Dakota warriors were also moving in large numbers across the Minnesota River Valley, searching for survivors of the attack on the agency. So here at the site of the Redwood Ferry, uh, the escaping whites from the Lower Sioux Agency tried to cross the river here, the Minnesota River, to escape, uh, to get to Fort Ridgely, which is about I don't know, about 13 miles downstream. Um, in the attempt to escape, there were also Sioux here waiting at the uh, Redwood Ferry, and uh, they had attacked them. At noon the very same day, the Minnesotan forces stopped at the river for a drink of water when they were ambushed. Some 325 to 350 Dakota warriors, led by Chief Little Crow, attacked the 47 Minnesotan soldiers. It's actually, uh, they must have been hiding here and these bluffs along the river, knowing that they were completely teeming with attackers, um, enemies, trying to kill them. Rifles, bows and arrows, uh, being chased on horseback. 23 soldiers were killed, their interpreter was killed, and their commandant that was there ended up drowning trying to cross the river. The remaining troops that came across, it took them about two days to get back home to, their, to Fort Ridgely. I could only imagine what it would be like to take two days to get 13 miles. The Minnesotan soldiers were easily outnumbered. The military was completely unaware of the scope of the uprising. Afterward, it was open war on the prairie. The local Fort Ridgely wasn't entirely able to take on the Dakota war bands on their own. Little Crow's forces swarmed the countryside on horseback unchecked, attacking many defenseless towns. Milford Township, a primarily German settlement aptly named for the mill at a ford in the Minnesota River, was attacked. It was one of the worst hit communities of the war. 52 residents were slaughtered. Many residents from Leavenworth Township left for New Ulm for protection, but a few residents decided to stay behind. The next day, a rescue expedition of residents from Leavenworth went underway to check on their neighbors. They were attacked and a few on the expedition were killed as well. Their neighbors had abandoned their homes. It's assumed that residents had left town for Mankato and simply left the area altogether. Sacred Heart Township was another settlement that was attacked and burned to the ground. As word of the pillaging Dakota spread, many families left for shelter at the largest settlements in the area, either New Ulm, Mankato, or Fort Ridgely. For several days, southern Minnesota, a state that was not only four years old, had erupted into gunfire, smoke, and the cries of the slaughtered. Fort Ridgely was hopelessly undermanned and unable to adequately defend local settlements. The Dakota moved downstream toward their next target. They were to move on to the largest local settlement, the large German town of New Ulm. 